10 less than their time. If a swimmer swims 30 seconds, the stroke count should be 20. Let's see how Michael does on a 50. How many strokes? 18, 28, 2. Very good. I think in my opinion the most important part about butterfly training is probably holding stroke and make sure you have good technique at all times. I think we try to work real hard at making sure my hips are always riding the surface and I have a strong kick. In practice we also try to make sure our arms are as relaxed as possible and our hands enter the water very softly. I think the best way to train butterfly is always using excellent technique and making sure all the key aspects of the stroke are perfect. The third element of effective butterfly swimming is energy management. The double arm and leg movements in butterfly swimming call for tremendous amounts of power to be employed by the swimmer. Correct stroke timing and form can break down quickly under these energy demands. The North Baltimore Aquatic Club's butterfly training program is designed to condition the stroke while maintaining the integrity of the swimmer's technique. We use short repeat distances in our conditioning program. Michael performs 25, 50, 75, and 100 meter swims in his butterfly conditioning sets which employ a combination of stroke control aerobic training with high energy speed training at or near race pace. Michael will occasionally do repeats of 200 yards or more for variety, but the mainstay of his program is short repeat swims on short to moderate rest. We choose to do a majority of our training in short course yards or short course meter pools so that our swimmers can maintain excellent stroke mechanics during training. Short course training for long course competition allows the swimmers to swim on shorter rest intervals and maintain higher average stroke rates and pulse rates. Our work is endurance oriented, however, the daily training plan includes swimming at or near race speed with racing caliber stroke patterns at each session. Michael uses resistance training in the water to develop stroke specific strength and power. He does pulling with various equipment including pull buoys, hand paddles, rubber bands to tether the ankles and small inner tubes. Most of Michael's pulling work is done in freestyle and enhances muscle endurance. Individual medley or stroke pulling is done without paddles to avoid overstressing the shoulders. The use of tethered swimming or kicking builds stroke specific power. Overloading the arms or legs stimulates muscle fiber recruitment and explosive strength throughout the range of motion. Michael enjoys swimming against the stretch cord for power and then swimming back assisted by the cord. Assisted speed training gives the swimmer a feel of faster than race pace stroke movement and grooves neuromuscular firing patterns. Leg drive is crucial to butterfly swimming and Michael uses many different kicking drills to build both power and endurance. Vertical kicking with weight develops foot speed and power. Reverse body dolphins strengthen the core body muscles and emphasize the upsweep of the kick. Board kicking builds endurance and rhythm into the leg action. Dry land training helps to build basic strength and fitness and helps prevent injuries. Our dry land program is designed to improve core body strength while challenging the large muscle groups, which are the prime movers in the pool. The large muscle groups are the chest, back, and legs. Medicine balls, abdominal work, pull-ups, push-ups, jumping, and other leg exercises are the foundation of our exercise program. Michael 
uses a track start which allows him to react quickly to the starter signal. Upon the command, take your mark, Michael will grab the front edge of the block with the toes of his left foot. He'll place his right foot at the rear of the block with the heel up. This helps to keep his center of gravity on the front edge of the block. He'll apply light pressure with his fingers and gently pull up on the front edge of the block. Upon the signal to go, he'll spring forward with his arms and get a good push off the front foot to enter the water with as much speed as possible. Go! Michael tries to enter the water at the lowest angle possible. The goal is to have the entire body enter through one hole in the water. Okay. After cleanly entering the water, Michael initiates his powerful body dolphins to drive him forward and up to the surface. He takes his first stroke of the breakout without breathing to maximize his momentum from the start and minimize his chances of choking on water, which tends to be turbulent during the breakout phase. When performing the butterfly turn, pay attention to several key aspects. Number one, the swimmer must be accelerating into the wall. This will allow for maximum transfer of energy in the change of direction. As Michael approaches the wall, he builds speed and hits the touch pad with both hands at the fingertips. Immediately, he initiates the change of direction by pulling his knees to his chest, throwing his head straight back, and having his lead arm pull back and down towards the bottom. The trail arm is placed directly below his ear, and the turn is performed in one movement. It is important that all the swimmer's air be exhaled prior to touching the wall so that a quick breath may be taken during the turn. Once the turn is made, the feet should leave the wall and immediately begin the body dolphin technique. This will allow for maximum speed off the turn and generate momentum for the important breakout stroke. Michael takes his breakout stroke just at the surface so that his body line is horizontal when he makes the first movement with his arms. This technique minimizes frontal resistance and allows for maximum transfer of power into the swimming portion of the race. When finishing a butterfly race, finish with a full stroke. Time the finish so that there's little room to glide and decelerate. Michael starts judging his finish between 5 and 10 meters from the wall. This gives him time to adjust his strokes to the proper length. Remember to keep driving your legs into the finish and keep your head down until your fingertips have solidly hit the touch pad. We feel that it is better to glide longer and kick into the wall than to take a short stroke close to the wall and jam the finish.